this 2023 MLB preview edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. For boosted same game parlays, the live in game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Bet 100, get 100 at winbet.com or download the WinBet app and start winning today. State restrictions apply. We're also brought to you by the Sports Gambling Podcast Final Four Watch Party this Saturday. Sweat out your bets with us over on youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. Hey, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner of Circa Las Vegas. You're listening to FGPN. Let it ride. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green with my partner in picks, Ryan Real Money Kramer. What's happening, Kram? Dog. Back by popular demand. All oh, rise. I got my judge shirt on, Sean. Yes. Ba- baseball. Baseball Kramer is here. Baseball Sean is here. I got my Phillies uh jersey on, rocking the Phils. Unfortunately, much like the Eagles came up. Uh, just a bit short in the championship series, but again, we don't know shit about baseball. That's oh. why well, we, are, uh, we can talk like early, late eighties, early nineties <laughs> baseball. Yeah, if you want to talk about the even you know, early Chicago aughts. White Sox, Frank Thomas, Joey Cora, Jack McDowell, Robin Ventura, oh, wow, L- Lance Johnson in center Lance field, Steve, Steve Sachs was there, Bo Jackson. You can put it on the board. Yes. No, uh, obviously we don't know that much about baseball, but thankfully we are joined by uh, the co-hosts of the MLB gambling podcast. Going to get to them in just a second. But of course, as always, make sure you get down over on win bet, baby. Uh, MLB is here. Get down on the, I mean, so many ways to bet MLB. I mean, it, it's really cool now with the first five, first five totals. Uh, you know, no run first innings, just player props in general. I was going to say five innings still seems like a long time. Yeah. How about the one inning stuff, Sean? For, well, there's, there's no run first inning. Again, there's so many ways to bet baseball, especially. And uh, we're going to be talking a ton of futures here, giving out some division uh, bets, win total bets, even uh, World Series predictions. Of course, get down over at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and president of the state where play through winbet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, 1 800 522 hundred. And of course, make sure you get in on our masters contest. Still time to enter uh, to win a three night stay at circle Las Vegas. Hang out with us. Watch the masters at stadium swim sports game podcast.com slash golf party and uh, use the promo code SGP 15. If you just want to come hang out, joining us are the guys from the MLV gambling podcast. First off, you know, from the MLB gambling podcast, ton of other shows on the network, including the NBA gambling podcast, hashtag respect the NBA, Mr. Moon off Manji. What's up moon off? No, I was like a good opportunity to fill uh, or shit on the, uh, on any Philly sports, but look, we got to give Ooh. credit where credit is due. Yes. MLB Sean shows up twice a year <laughs> last season before the season started. He gives out a casual 25, to one Cy young award winner. So did I did give out Verlander wow. uh, a little future action, Ryan. That is some serious uh, that well done. Moonoff. Well done. Your, your performance <laughs> review this month will go well. Well, and I uh, moon off really balances. Cause it, you know, when we have him on the show, very nice, very complimentary when he, when he's on social media, he's just firing <laughs> shots left and right. Uh, saying, you know, we don't respect the NBA. Moon off. Uh, I it love, is genius. I do the like the NBA, but I mean, you want to talk about respect the NBA? What is it? What about the players respecting the NBA? I mean, today we got Embiid, Giannis, and uh, the Joker all sitting out for like minor injuries. What's going on in your NBA? You know what? That that's exactly why people are actually starting to get turned off about the NBA. Like, and it's at a disadvantage for us too, right? When we're like recording the pods and just for oh our listeners, God, right? Yeah. Like we're okay. Like the marquee matchup, everybody was looking uh, <laughs> forward to on Mondays. Embiid versus a Joker for the MVP, and hello and behold, Joel Embiid did like a rep- or like an interview 
with the athletic and he's talking all this shit about, Hey, I'm, I'm the asshole of the league. I, I embrace the villainy like Terrell does. And then two hours or an hour after we record the part, Joel Embiid sitting out tonight due to a calf injury. Well, I am I am the ba- <laughs> the evil bad guy. I'm an evil villain. Oh my! I have a nagging calf. I won't be in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Feel- at least in baseball, it's 162 games. You know they're not going to be playing some of the games. It's it's crazy in NBA. But hey, we're here to talk the hardball, and what better way than to uh, be joined by uh, the co-host of the MLB Gambling Podcast, our buddy from across the pond, Mr. Malcolm Bamford. What's happening, Malcolm? Hello, lovely boys. How are you doing? <laughs> lovely to speak to you again. Been a while. Yes. Well, and if if you what you what you didn't hear in the build up to bringing these guys on was Malcolm uh, turning actual paper pages. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're, if you're he, watching on YouTube, it's <laughs> worth it because he's got like some sort of. Uh, I he's actually. Got a I'll tell giant... you what, it's not just one. <laughs> this is the oh, amount wow. of shit and work I do for you boys. <laughs> <I> got... <laughs> He's got Mountains just of tablets on tablets. <laughs> he's got a, a, he's got some sort of tablecloth. It looks like uh, from Christmas. On it top. is a Christmas tablecloth. Yeah. I, I noticed that holiday theme tablecloth. <laughs> I guess your wife doesn't uh, trust you with the good table. You might uh, shoot all over it or whatever. Whatever happened at your uh, Premier League party, you spilled all over the place. There's a lot going on well, on this network, Ryan. Yeah. You boys have had me so busy that I haven't had time to get the tablecloth off because I'm at the table <laughs> working the whole time. No, but yeah, there was an incident with the kind of squirty cream um, a couple of weeks ago. But we can. Uh, we can well, just to clarify, that. was it was uh, the, the squirty cream incident <laughs> is not something <laughs> HR needs to be aware of. Just so we're clear, it was something completely different. Because over here, you hear the word squirty cream incident, and uh, you might you might get a nope. different idea, Malcolm. It's uh, Elon's Twitter. <laughs> And I'm glad. I'm glad that I'm glad that Malcolm's here. I'm glad that Moonov's here because to <laughs> to steal an expression from Malcolm, I feel like a bird uh, in an eclipse right now going into this 2023 no. MLB season. But that's why we bring in the pros. Ryan uh, won't stop us from giving out some picks. Again, I owe it to the fans to give out my you know my 25 to one lock it up uh, pick. All right, let's start here in the Nash. Oh, go. You want to go NL or AL first, Ryan? I'll oh, let you have the honors. I mean, don't di, don't they call do they still call it the junior and senior circuits? <laughs> if if so, oh, then know. isn't it AL is the junior circuit. So okay. we'll start there. Let's start with the American League. Your AL East, Ryan. Not even going to compliment me for that flex to show people <laughs> I actually know baseball. That is that is a great little inside yeah. nugget. I know how to keep score too. <laughs> Come at me, Moonoff. Uh, AL East. What? What are the of these win totals? Which one is uh, is jumping out at you? Yeah, I'm gonna go with the under on the Tampa Bay Rays for oh. this upcoming Ooh. year. I'm in the minority this year, but I just uh, so let's start with the pitching staff, right? They have Shane McClanahan, Cy Young candidate. I know we'll talk about Cy Young and things like that later, but. I think the more concerning part for me is that I'm not sure they're going to be able to score enough runs to really support the pitching staff. But we already see, I think Wander Franco is already headed for an MRI or to the IL uh, for the Tampa Bay Rays. I think the other teams have definitely improved, right? We talk about the Yankees pitching rotation has improved. The blue Jays made a defensive shift this year, as far as their outfielders, having more defensive guys out there, they still have a, a top notch pitching staff. The Red Sox, I think, may be a little bit more surprising this upcoming season. And then we talk about the Baltimore Orioles. They're going to be the big, fun, sexy pick as well because of all the young guys that they do have. So I feel like the Tampa Bay Rays do take a step back this upcoming season. I'm going to go with the under on the 89 and a half right now. That's posted for them. Oh, yeah. It feels dangerous to fade the Rays. Yeah, I feel like they've been a bucket, but they um, they get blood out of a rock. Isn't isn't that what they say? Uh, Yeah, it it seems like. and by the way, Sean, we did invest in some baseball in the futures draft that you oh, missed yes. while you're off snorkeling in real life. <laughs> I'll, I'll update as we go. No, nothing to no futures from the AL East. Mal, what about you? What's your uh, what's your favorite uh, win total bet here for the AL East? Well, there's good news and bad news for me enough. The bad news is that I'm picking directly against him, but the good <laughs> news is that he can still win because I've got the Rays winning the division. But with the eighty nine wins, so oh, okay. you can still you can still fade the moon off, and you can sneak in by half a game. Um, 
this is a, a three way a three way go here. You could throw a blanket over the top three teams. It's like a, there's a four game spread covering the top three teams here. And at that point, I think you have to take the outside with the three just to, for, for value sake. So I've got the race to win the division. Um, and that's a price of plus 380. But my best pick on, on the total is uh, the Boston Red Sox. So their total is at 77 and a half. I get them going to 81. Um, lots of question marks in the lineup, but I think they're going to be all right. We just saw Yoshida um, from Japan, who was outstanding in the WBC. Um, he hit a homer in the win over the uh, USA. Uh, sorry to, to bring that one up, boys. But, um, Bastards. Yes. I mean, did you see Team GB, though? I mean, what a what a story that was. Oh, that um, was fun to watch. Everybody's favourite. Uh, but I like the rotation. I think Chris Sale is going to have an outstanding year. Um, I'll be coming back to him in a little while. Um, and there's a young lad on the pitching staff called Brian Bale as well, who I think is going to go OK. So I do fancy the race to win the division, but my best totals pick is... Uh, the Red Sox to go over the 77 and a half. I, I hear so, it sounds a little bit like Malcolm has a projection system. <laughs> yes. And, and, and what do you think all those <laughs> piles of notebooks are for? I, I'm, he's I'm manually, <laughs> he's manually doing the heavy lifting. I'm right? just predicting. I, I would imagine he just runs through the schedule manually for each team <laughs> and, and comes to a number and that's his projection. Yeah. This is it, whiteboard in the corner. Yeah, he, he, does have, ball. he really has everything <laughs> going on over here. I mean, it's a very, it's a, it's a high tech, low tech studio. I now, like it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Chris Sale was the guy who went crazy and cut up his own jersey. Was that correct? If you tell me, is that Moon off? Um, who is the I guy? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> who is the pitcher that cut his own jersey? Oh wait, yeah, what? Uh, when he was on the White Sox, yes, he he got sent home. This was yeah. in 2016. He got sent home oh, 2016. for 2016. Oh, yeah, sorry, maybe before your time. Uh, the, uh, the <laughs> <laughs> he he got sent home uh, because he used the knife to destroy his throwback uniform because he didn't want to wear it. Yes, because it was <laughs> the throwback uniforms were like pinching his arm, and he had he threw a tantrum. He just cut up his jersey. I don't know. The guy sounds well, like a real crazy person. Let's not let's not say this too loudly. We're gonna have some situations in in the NFL. Maybe <laughs> definitely the NBA. With the way these guys dress, they're gonna be coming in with. Uh, it's gonna look like the jersey has dreads. You're gonna see a midriff. It's gonna be horrible. Yeah, Zeke's gonna be. Uh, let's, let's make Zeke's sure. Zeke's gonna be for them. Let's get some sponsors there and right now, so they can't do that. I'm I'm uh the team I'm on in the AL East. Give me the Baltimore oh. Orioles over. 76 and a half and uh, Daniel Vreeland over at sports gambling podcast.com made a good case uh, for a small sprinkle on them oh. to win the AL East at 25 to one. I mean, oh boy. the Orioles ended, uh, they finished 83 and 29. They were, they were like one of the best teams I think to bet on the run line. They lost a ton of uh, one score games. You bring in the number one rated prospect Gunnar Henderson. Jesus look out. I, I think the O's are a sneaky team and Obviously, the the AL East is top heavy, but um, I I certainly like can, them. Can I over just counter that, Sean? With sure, one, one of one of the few stats I've got to hand. Last year, Baltimore won thirty one more games than they had done in twenty twenty one. Now, the fourteen times that's happened in the past, um, twelve of those fourteen teams have regressed by at least twelve games. <laughs> so that knocks them way back down again. Unfortunately. It's just same because I like them. I find them quite easy to root for. They've got a load of fun players in there. Players like you mentioned, Gunnar Henderson. But that start completely and utterly turned me off. But I mean, the rules are there to be broken, Sean. So who's to say? No, I, I I think you're right. They are probably prime for a regression. But even at 76 and a half, I think that's that's somewhat. What, what, is, what would you? I mean, not obviously you don't have this data in front of you, Muna. But what would you say that Orioles' average win total has been the last five years? Ooh, like 60, 60 for sure. Are we but, like below like probably 60 to 65? Yeah, like this this is a I mean they won yeah, they won 83 last year, so they could still regress um a decent amount and 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 still hit that over. Like they could still regress what six games and still hit the over 76 and a half. I think what I'm saying I think the number is pricing in the uh Orioles regression there. Yeah, what I, I wanted to look up the Orioles' win total last year was sixty-one and a half. Yeah, so they destroyed it. I still think it's a decent bet this year. Obviously, oh. it is a it is a higher number, but I I think the team's decent. 
Uh, you know what? This is fun that we did because uh, uh, obviously I was coming with c the handful of picks I came with. This was the one that you circled. This is the obvious regression. They won eight games by so three you're going, points. You're going this Baltimore th under using principles we learned in the NFL, Sean. This is the <laughs> classic. You have to fade this team. Sixty-one and a half to seventy-six and a half is a massive shift uh, for a team that is still projected to be at the bottom of their division. Which means, uh, you know, I know. Um, we didn't even ask these guys, but I know there are some changes to the schedule. Uh, still play your division a shit ton, and for that reason, yeah, under Baltimore. And honestly, when, when we're out in uh, Vegas at the Circa, I'm gonna see what the no price is on the Orioles to win the, the division. <laughs> With all these sharps laying these big prices, I think I might do it. Take a couple mortgage payments, just throw it do on you, the Orioles, you, to not you, make, not you, win the division. Do you have a play on the division, Ryan? Oh, I mean, come on, I'm still gonna play the Yankees. Yankees chalk. Plus one thirty. Uh, th this kind of feels like a Yankees year, you know. <laughs> no, no big favorites in the final four. <laughs> Underdogs. Uh, some, uh, some chalk. Yeah, no, yeah I mean, it's gonna, it's, it's, it's gonna be a great year for those Lakers, Cowboys, Yankees fans. No, I mean, I, I'm look. I'm wearing a Yankee shirt. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be into the season for at least one game. <laughs> I'm committing to opening day, and we'll see from there. Moon off. <laughs> what do you got for a division winner? Uh, Blue Jays. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, I was gonna say if I wasn't a Yankees fan, it seems like the kind of year you just you bet the Blue Jays. Why the you uh, why you like the Blue Jays for the division, Munaf? Uh, two so to think, one. Yeah, number one, I really do like their pitching rotation. They added Chris Bassett along with Alec Manoa, Kevin Gossman. We saw what he did with the Giants, and he was pretty good last year as well with the Blue Jays. I think the one guy that you have to look out for this rotation that may break or make this rotation is going to be Jose Barrios. The offense was one of the best ones last year. Um, they, like I mentioned, they added some defensive guys with Kevin Kiermaier, Dom Varsho from the Diamondbacks, but they still have a, a MVP caliber player in Vladimir Guerrero Jr. If George Springer, Bo Bichette, those guys are able to stay healthy, I think from one to six, Matt Chapman as well. One to six, I think they're they're a great hitting lineup. I like what they did as far as defense, and then the bullpen is going to be great as well. And then they brought back the interim manager from last year. Um, who's going to be really good for them this year. So, and they also change the dimensions in the ballpark. So obviously they'll give up runs as well. But when you have these caliber hitters in this lineup with a shortened wall uh, in right field, they'll be able to score a lot of runs. So I really do like uh, from top to bottom, from pitching to hitting to their bullpen, the blue Jays. Now you mentioned uh, they changed the dimensions of the park. How have you, there's a bunch of rule changes for baseball. Uh, we've gone. Which and, shout out to baseball for trying at least. Yeah, they they've made the bases gigantic. They're what <laughs> uh, twenty feet by twenty feet across. Uh, and, then, now. Massive. And, yeah, and then they have the pitch clock. Um, how are you? Are are you doing anything as far as like changing? It seemed like in the World Baseball Classic. Uh, there was a number. It was good for the overs, but have you like because the pitchers seem to be struggle. Uh, there seem to struggle with like a rush clock. Are you yep. are you factoring any of these rule changes into your handicapping? I think early on we'll have to keep an eye out for totals, but I yeah. think another underrated market that we should look at for prop purposes stolen the stolen bases market mm. because really the 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 changes that they did make are that they want to see more action on the base pads, you know, guys getting on bases, scoring runs, stealing bases and things like that. So I think there's going to be a point where it might take the books, uh, maybe a two, three, four weeks up to a month, maybe even a month and a half to catch up as far as some of these player props, as far as, you know, stolen bases markets run scored, things like that. So I think that's where you got to pounce on it early. And obviously we'll keep an eye on the game totals as well, the daily games, but obviously like, you know, you guys mentioned, it's just create more excitement, right? For fans to get them engaged again, seeing more run scored, more balls being in play and things like that. So I think those are the two things I'm looking at is the game totals and the stolen bases market. All right. Here's a fun, fun exercise. So the, the current, the old bases were 15 inches square. Yeah. The home, home plate's not, not affected. The new pl new bases are 18 inches square. Uh, they're, oh, so they're still square. So they're going from 15 yeah. to 18 <laughs> inches square. What percentage increase? In area is that how much bigger are so these you'd have bases? to do three times three, right? You could do it a number of ways. You could tell let's say new size area minus old size area. Anyway, it's 44% bigger, really, which is somewhat shocking. The average person isn't going to make that, make that assumption. Also 90 feet from, from base to base. Well, we're cutting that down by almost a half foot here. Really? Well, 
again, the base is growing. Yeah. So, oh yeah, you're right. So if you think of it just purely like, what if they were to, you know, now you see you're really 89 and a half feet. So uh, the, the speedsters are going to be cutting down that time by a couple tenths. It's got to matter. I mean, no, yeah, it feels anecdotal, uh, but it also like it's material. But you think about if if like stealing a base becomes five percent easier, you do that over a hundred sixty two game season. That's going to add up to more runs, more bases. One of our one of our futures that we bought into in the futures draft, Sean, yeah, is Corbin Carroll, which is a top prospect speedster, faster than even Trey Turner. <laughs> Most stolen bases in the in the league this year. Mal, so. do you have any uh, any any hot takes on the new uh, baseball rules? I love it. Um, you see, I don't have the baggage of 35 years or whatever watching baseball that a lot of people who are complaining about would do. So I'm all for it. Um, <laughs> the games have been a shit ton quicker with the pitch clock. The spring training games have been going two hours five, two hours ten. Ryan wow. was saying at the start of the game that five innings is too long to wait to have a bit. Everything's uh, squeezed up, and that means I can go to bed at a reasonable hour as well. By the way, I can get to bed an hour earlier this season, so that's all um, positive. The stolen base thing's great. The the fact that the pitcher can only try and pick you off twice, can only throw over twice. That means again the base runner can take a huge lead, um, and still so stolen that again points to more stolen bases. Oh so yeah, that's absolutely right, well. right. In those first games, get on those speeds. It's Corbin Carroll is absolutely rapid as well. Like. Um, and I think the the shift changes are kind of more relevant for fantasy. So if you're a fantasy yeah. player, there's a lot of players who've been absolutely handcuffed by the shift. Um, and all of a sudden, I mean, that must be like it's like Christmas morning for them boys. They've got their game back again. You know, they've made a career for six, seven, eight, nine, ten years of, of playing one shot. Um, all of a sudden, it's back on again, you know, where where the 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 metrics have had the defenders stopping them. That's going to be back on again. So yeah, I'm all for it. I can't wait to see how it pans out. It does seem interesting uh, at most that they're, I mean, uh, this is one of those things that Colby's not a baseball fan, but he would be pissed <laughs> about the, oh, the, so sh angry. the shift, the new shift rules. You're just making it easy. This guy, <laughs> all he can do is hit it. Ah. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, I to me, I think to to Malcolm's point, the shift stuff probably impacts the game more than the base stuff. But yeah, that's a point. fun trivia uh, question for the bar. All right, moving over to the AL Central, uh, Moonoff, you're on the clock. What do you got? What's your favorite win total? I'm gonna go with the bottom of the barrel. Give me the cancer rules under. Um, you talk about the three teams oh, no. in oh, no. the AL AL Central at the top: the Guardians, the White Sox, and and the Twins. Uh, those three teams are going to battle out. I mean, just look at their win totals. Those top three teams are only separate about four games, 82 and a half for the twins, 83 and a half for the white Sox, 86 and a half for the guardians. I do understand they have some young talent, but I think the biggest question for me about this Royals team is going to be their pitching. They do have one guy in Brady singer that they're looking forward to, but when you still have 50 year old Zach Grinke on this team, who is going to be a guy that's going to be affected by that, that pitch clock now who kind of likes taking his time after every pitch, I think that, you know, guys projected in this pitching rotation to have ERA of above four and a half, it's going to be difficult for them to win very many games. So I think that the Royals, it's going to be a long year for them. I see them more of a 65 to 68 win team. I think this number has ballooned up a little bit to 69 and a half. Um, and I do like the guardians to win this division again. Mal, what do you got on the Royals? Well, you might have heard my muted yes. oh no in the background because I've got one pick and it's the over on the Kansas City Royals, which is uh, absolutely no use to anybody. So, yeah, we uh, we negate each other. I like him. They've got a, a lot of my totals, my favorite totals, Bobby are Witt all Jr. out of the basement. I do like quite a lot of the bum teams to go over, um, as, as we'll find out in the next 20 minutes or so. But, yeah, I like the lineup. I don't mind the pitching. Um, and I do think everything's just going to be a little bit more squeezed together this year. So like I say, I've got a lot of the basement teams um, going over um, in Kansas City, one of them. Kramer, what about you? What do you like here? Oh, I'm, yeah, the, uh, Guardians all day. Guardians? I'm in on the Guardians. You're, uh, you're over well, on the Guardians? I, I, I'm reading through. I, I had sent a text to someone. I was like, I need some I need some intel on the Guardian or on the on the uh, baseball season so I can sound like not a complete uh, snorkeler. And the first thing I got in response was guardians to win it all. Great bet this year. Really? 
And so uh, while while I have no idea how much grinding this person's done, been doing, <laughs> it made me suggest, oh, okay, this is easy. I'll just be chalky in baseball like I am in every other sport. Take the over here. Take the division. And I guess we're sprinkling the World Series too. Wow. All right. Is that I, too too much? I wasn't no, supposed no. to get reveal. I, I mean, you know. I, I mean, I just and I like not, the it's idea. It's not crazy of, them to win the division plus one thirty. Them to win the World Series twenty two to one. Guardian talk in the office too. I think we'll be good with <laughs> with Colby around. Hear his takes on. <laughs> he on lo- the he name loves change. the new name. Uh, I'm going. Uh, I'm going to throw some haterade on the Detroit Tigers. Oh. I think there's a real chance oh. they could be the worst team in the majors. So I'm going to take under seventy and a half. Um, they're in a somewhat competitive division. They don't have a ton of talent and yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't think they have a great bullpen. Uh, they lost some guys in their bullpen. So I'm taking, I'm taking the tigers under 70 and a half moon off. What do you got for uh, to win the division uh, guardians? Oh, you're also oh, uh, interesting. It sounds pretty sharp <laughs> over there. <laughs> Keeping it chalky Malcolm. What do you got? Do you have a, the, are you on the Guardians as well? You like any of these long shots? No, I'm not. I'm on the Minnesota Twins. Um, again, a blanket finish predicted here um, between the the Twins and the Guardians. Uh, absolutely neck and neck photo finish. Uh, but the Twins are a bigger price, a little bit like the Rays uh, with the Yankees and the Blue Jays. If they're all going to finish in a heap, you need to take the bigger price. So yeah, give me the Minnesota Twins. Uh, Fangraphs likes the Twins and the guardians to have the same amount of wins. So yeah, I'm with Malcolm. I, I think, uh, you know, fan says it's going to be close. The odds right. may as well you know take what? the plus two fifteen. change my win total. The twins over really. And oh, then I'll so keep you're, my guardians you're Benedictine the here a little bit. I'm just, just uh, positioning my portfolio for a nice, nice mix between a ceiling and a floor. Sean. Moving over to the AL West, uh, Munaf, you gotta explain to me how the Angels are so bad at baseball <laughs> and have just have Otani and Mike Trout. Like there was that great moment. Uh, well, unfortunately, Trout struck out, but I mean, you know, two of the best players in the world at baseball, and they're on the same team, and it's a pitcher who plays both sides, uh, offense and defense. It's it's insane that their win total is at eighty one and a half. And they just figure out ways to lose games. Uh, what do you got for your favorite AL AL West win total? As far as the Angels, I mean, me and Mal have been harping on this ever since we started the MLB <laughs> Gambling Podcast. Is that they never address pitching? Yeah, like they've never done it, and they've never went out and gotten an ace pitcher. I know when they got Otani, he was automatically their best pitcher. I know they brought in Tyler Anderson from the Dodgers, but. I still felt like they needed a frontline starter without was going out and getting a guy like Scherzer or Verlander, but they never did it. Tyler Anderson's a nice pickup. I think Pat, uh, Patrick Sandoval will be good for them as well. But health has been a real issue for this Angels team as well, right? We've seen Mike Trout be out for a long period of time over the last two seasons. Um, and guy, other guys in and out of the lineup as well. Anthony Rendon, another guy that's missed significant time and hasn't really lived up to the contract that he was given to by the angels after he left the nationals, after they won the ring. So this is really a make or break year for the uh, angels because Otani is on the brink of free agency. So it might come to a point where they may have to trade Otani. I think we can talk about that later in the season, but as far as the AL West um, it's hard to ignore the Astros, just how good they are. Uh, season in, season out. They are going to be without Jose Altuve for about two months because he did uh, fracture his thumb, I believe, in the World Baseball Classic. Was that um, like moving a trash can around or something? It, it was something like that. Um, <laughs> Jammed his thumb pretty bad. Yeah, he, he got caught up in the wires or something like that. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm going to stay with the Astros. They, they 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 just find ways to just get just get W's and and if they need to go out and make a move. Whether it's at the trade deadline, they're not afraid to do that. We saw a couple of years ago when they went out and got Verlander last season. They went out and got Christian Vasquez and Trey Mancini at the trade deadline to kind of help with the depth. Um, and again, two batters in this lineup that are really going to benefit from that defensive shift being banned are Jordan Alvarez and Kyle Tucker. So I'll, I'm going to stick with the Astros here at over 95 and a half wins. Mm. All right. Sean. It all depends whether how much mattress Mac is putting down on the Astros as to whether I'm going to tell them or not. He Run did win. Way, then. He did win last year, but then he he's he's been on a cold streak otherwise. Since Mike yep. Trout has played 
full se- so scratching the 2011 season when okay. he didn't really play. How many times has Mike Trout gone over this number in his career win total? Oh, I would say 81 and a half. How many times has Mike Trout and the Angels gone over 81 wins? 81 and a half wins. I'd say in his two career. two years. Three. Wow. Yeah, and and the last time it happened was 2000. It was uh, 2012 rookie year, uh, 2014 uh, where they won 98, best easily the best season he's had, and then the next year 85 has not done it since then. 2015, the last time the the Angels got over this it's number. Crazy. And I a little inside ing, Iggy here, uh, Sean. You know a, a mutual friend of ours who knows a lot of people. He. He had I have no idea who you're talking mutual about. friend knows a lot of people in LA. <laughs> okay, uh, we nah. we know had some ha, had had a, a friend go to Fullerton, get drafted into the league. I'm limiting down the numbers, yep. and he he may or may not have es- essentially said that the Angels are are cool with weed in the locker room. Hmm. And I yeah, have to imagine, I have to not not that Mike Trout seems square as fuck, so I don't yeah. think he's getting down with it, which is why he can compete for the MVP. <laughs> But I got to Matt. Maybe it's the bullpen. Maybe that's why the bullpen. I, th- this team is cursed. I, when you pull up their rec, they live in Los. They're in Los Angeles. Yep. You can recruit anyone. You have the two best players in the game, and yet you still can't even muster eighty wins. The last time they got eighty wins was two thousand eighteen. Sean, yeah. under on the Angels' worst stadium in sports. I once got a ticket for drinking a beer, sitting next to my Honda Element from a cop on a horse in that fucking parking lot. That is a disgusting I act. I don't think you were there uh, for that, Sean. It was, uh, it was our, our, it was, I, w- I was there with a former Yankee fan uh, and a uh, friend of the program, Bill rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was crazy. I got a fucking ticket for tailgating at an angels game from a cop on a horse. So we're going to go <laughs> under the angels. Win total. I know you didn't ask me, but I want no, to share. No, no, feel free to pop in, right? And, and I do think, show. I do think, while uh, for most people, marijuana is not a performance enhancer, and so, yeah, I, I think it's probably not good that the the medical staff there is cool with too much weed. cannabis. Uh, well, here we go. For me, I'm taking the Seattle Mariners under 87 and a half wins. I mean, Ooh. they had that. They had that magical run to get them to 90 wins. They close out the season super strong. I understand why some people would be high on the Mariners, but I don't know. I just don't. Um, it, it, it it just felt like everything went right for that Mariners team. They're probably one of those teams that that is due for regression. So I'm on I'm on Seattle under 87 and a half. Malcolm, am I crazy to be fading the Mariners? And w- what do you like win total here? No, the uh, the smudge of doom is next to Seattle under eighty seven and a half in my jotter here. So I absolutely co-sign that one, Sean. I'm with you, Mark. Smudge um, of doom. <laughs> yep. The uh, the Angels. We did the division preview, and myself and Moon have joked that my first album is going to be called Seduced by Angels because <laughs> every time, every year we've done this show, I get seduced by the Angels again, and that's exactly what's happened. Um, I think my Trout's going to have a vintage Mike Trout season. Um, a stellar Mike Trout season. <laughs> Otani's only going to get better and better. I think they should be about seven to one here to um, to win the division, and they're getting eleven to one. So I would take the Angels to make the playoffs at plus mm. one sixty five. Uh, but my total is going to be Auckland. Um, okay. Auckland are being very disrespected. Um, the total is at fifty nine and a half. I think they're going to win sixty eight games. Oh. I don't think that. Oh. Um, <laughs> the starting oh. rotation is too bad. Moon, F- shut up. There's a lot of names in there that we like. Paul Blackburn, James Caprillian, yeah. uh, Ken Waldichuk. We just like saying, admittedly. The bullpen is better than a whole lot of other teams. They've added a couple of overseas additions. Uh, Fujinami, um, the Japanese pitcher. Yeah, the, they are terrible, but they're not 59 and a half terrible. They're 68 games terrible, and that's plenty bettable for me. Oh, wow. Oh. 
I like how he dumpster oh, dumps. Oh, uh, you know, it's a classic. The, air out the room there. No, no, it's just the cl- I, I, I've, I do this many times as well. Of like, uh, I just want to listen to Moon off and Malcolm <laughs> do a podcast about. Yeah, baseball. if only, if only there was a way to subscribe yeah. to the MLB <laughs> Gambling Podcast. So I got you on the Angels to win the division, in spite of the, uh, abs- uh, in spite of the odds that would uh, that would actually happen. Moon off. What about you? What do you What do you like to win the division? I'm gonna stick with the Astros, man. I, I hate laying a minus price um, oh, for this long in the season, here. but until somebody dethrones this Astros team, it's just really hard to ignore them. Even without Altuve for two months, there's more than enough to compensate. I mean, they freaking picked up Jose Abreu from the damn Chicago White Sox to come play first base for them. That's a former MVP. So um, yeah, until I see the uh, somebody dethrone the Astros, it, it, it's got to be the Astros for me. Sweet. So it, this in the last leg of my division winning parlay, <laughs> take all the chalk. You're also taking Houston minus one seventy five, right? Yes. I, as much as I would like to ride with Malcolm and the Angels at eight uh, and a half to one, I obviously I'm never going to take the Astros, especially all those mean things their fans uh, said to me mm. on social media. <laughs> that was, I was the past, Sean. <laughs> that, it happened. It's over. <laughs> It was really, it was really fun. And then, oh man, when the, when the Phillies won that game, I was, I, I had so many great, I had even cut together a video of all their hateful um, screenshots and it was, I had the music ready to go. I was about, all I had to do was hit export on the video. Well, and the Phillies needed to win the world series. Uh, And and then it all came crumbling down to, to spite the Astros fans and because anytime a division win total is 250 to one, I'm in. Give me the Oakland A's to no. shock the world. No, no, <laughs> and 250 to one. I'll say this: the 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 value is there because no. 500 to one to win the World Series, only 250 to one to win the division. There's five teams. Will this bet still be alive? Moonoff, on Moonoff August- walked off the show. Will, will this will this bet still be alive on August 1st? Will it be alive May 1st? <laughs> <laughs> I I love the moxie, but it's a hard. I mean, once again, you can parlay the chalk, like I'm gonna do, and you can get plus seven thirty one. Yeah, I, I just don't. I don't have it in me. Uh, I'm going. Sean, I'm, you're you're staring <laughs> at that rearview mirror right now. Baseball Sean is is sitting on your shoulder. He's like, <laughs> well, hey, speaking of baseball Sean, what better way to catch a baseball game than by rocking some shady rays? Can't wait to head down to Chavez Ravine, rock my shady rays. These polarized glasses are awesome. Obviously, they're awesome if you're. I mean, if I was an outfielder, I'd be all over these shady rays. I went to a game. And uh, it was at Chavez Ravine, obviously a very sunny park. There was a guy in the outfield without sunglasses. You're a madman. How would you track the ball with no sunglasses? I don't get it. And especially when you can get a sweet pair of shady rays, look good, play good, especially when you're rocking these sweet, sweet shady rays. Uh, again, if you don't like them for whatever reason, you could return them for free within 30 days. Uh, if you break them, smash them, even on day one, they got you covered. Uh, great uh, return policy there. They will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. Uh, I, I don't know how they do it. But again, love my Shady Rays. All you got to do is go to shadyrays.com. Use the promo code SGPN for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 200,000 people. Kramer and I rocking our Shady Rays now in uh, studio, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. And before we get to the AL, also shouting out sword vitality. Oh, that's right. You want to hit a home run in the bedroom. You want to, you want to get an inside the park home run. I don't really know what that equivalent would be, but Hey, uh, check out some sword vitality, increase blood flows in ways that help you thrive in the bedroom can also increase your stamina again. Maybe uh maybe you're a nine inning guy uh, or you're looking to become a nine inning guy. Maybe you were a no runs in the first inning. You want to get the full nine innings. Uh, you need to go to swordvitality.com. Helps increase your stamina. You don't have to hide it. You can be proud of it. Unsheath your sword. Again, you're not you're not hitting a home run with a soft bat, and uh, the same applies to the bedroom. Swordvitality.com promo code SGPN get a nice discount. Check out and make sure you click all the way through so you get that discount. Swordvitality.com promo code SGPN unsheath. 
You're sore. C- couple things, Sean. Uh, one, they don't allow aluminum or metal bats. Oh, yeah. In, so we're gonna need to get. Sword like, vitality is it's like playing with aluminum bat. Great well, analogy. Right? No, well, I was gonna say uh, <laughs> it's a perfect way for us to transition <laughs> and talk about the types of wood. Oh. Ah, see what we're there, doing there. Okay. And, I like and, it. And it made me think we need for baseball season. We need a base like a bat cracking a ball sound effect oh, yeah. for sword vitality. I know it's it's a long <laughs> stretch there, but we are. It is the uh, American pastime. I like your, I and like, baseball. I like baby. your uh, yeah. What's more American? I like your optimism that we will be talking more baseball oh, uh, on the show. Well, I told you. What well, what if I decide <laughs> to opt in after day one for another day? Look out. <laughs> All right, now we're going uh, to the NL. Start with the NL Central. We'll let Mal start here. Mal, what do you like win total wise, and uh, what's your what's your division play here for the NL Central? Did you hear that page flip? <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, I'm trying to turn my pages <laughs> quietly now after you took the piss before. Um, so yeah, the NL Central. This is not the most inspiring of divisions. Um, the NL Central, by the way. There'll be a couple of games in London in June, and I have my tickets for the London Ooh. series. Oh, so if you awesome. if you want me to do some live stuff from yes. uh, MLB London in June, I'm your man. The tickets were the price of a small family car, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to have to go down to get my money's worth out of them. Um, so, yeah, I think it's it's hard to get away from St. Louis to win the division. Um, I like them a lot. They, they they did really well last year. They're a very strong second half team. The rotation. I think Adam Wainwright's going to struggle a little bit, but I, I don't mind the rest of the rotation. Uh, Miles Miklas, Jordan Montgomery. I like Stephen Matson and Jack Flaherty, who we need a full season of. They had to replace the catcher, Yadi Molina, who was there uh, forever, but they added Wilson Contreras, which I think was a great move because that was an important move for them. Apart from that, though, they've got a really young lineup. They haven't had to change an awful lot of things, so I just think they're going to get better and better for the next couple of for the next couple of years. I'm um, looking at other bets. I like. The Brewers to make the playoffs at plus 100. Um, but if you're looking for a total, I'm going to head to the basement again. And it's the Pittsburgh Pirates. The total is at 66 and a half. Um, I've got them going way, way, way over this, uh, similar to my Oakland pick. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, over for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, that total of 66 and a half for me, please. Like it. Are they not going to sell this year like they do every other year? I don't know if they, they've got I, nothing I, to sell. Yeah, yeah, what are they gonna unload? Uh, they'll they'll probably trade <laughs> Brian Reynolds. <laughs> Find a way. Any sort of uh, any sort of to the Yankees, by the way. That's where Reynolds is going. In case you want to know. Yeah, that's where they all end up. Mudoff, what do you got for uh, division play and uh, or win total and division play? I'm gonna go with the Cubbies over seventy seven and a half. Yes. Yeah. Um, I like the off season moves that they did make. They brought in a group of veteran guys into this row. Uh, pitching, sorry, the batting lineup and guys just having the locker room as well. Right. I know they have some young guys, but they brought in Trey Mancini. They bought in Cody Bellinger. Uh, hopefully he has a bounce back here. Eric Hosmer, they brought in as well. So I like those vets that they brought in. Also they signed their prized off season pickup in Dansby Swanson. Who's going to be in that two spot batting for them. So um, I like the road, uh, like the pitching uh, rotation as well. They brought in Jameson Tyone to be in that you know, two, three spot uh, Marcus Stroman. I think we'll have a great year as well. Um, so I think this is a good year for the Cubbies to possibly, I mean, don't be surprised if they are in contention for the division as well. So at 77 and a half, they won 73 last year with the additions that they did make. I think that's well above an improvement of five games with the additions that they did make. So I'm going to go with the over on the Cubbies for the division. Um, I'm going to go with the Cardinals as well. Um, I think that again, everything that Malcolm said that, uh, that they'll be able to pull it together as far as your pitching rotation, when you have two, you know, guys at the corner spots in the infield and Arenado and Goldschmidt uh, and the depth that they do have, I think it's going to be a, it'll be a difficult task to beat this Cardinals team for the division, but um, yeah, Cardinals division, then uh, Cubs over. Uh, I mean, we can play the same game with the Cardinals win total that, that we were playing with trout earlier. When's the last time they went under this number? Yeah. So, uh, but I, I, I mean, yeah. the Cardinals are a machine. Um, to so me, do you like the win total or the the division bet better, Moonoff or Malcolm? I think I would rather go with the win total on the over because right now it's at minus one twenty five for the division. I know last year we touted the Cardinals after the All Star break around two to one or plus two fifty to win the division, and lo and behold, they had a great second half of the year and they ran away with it. 
Interesting. So uh, here, here's the deal, Sean. We are invested in this St. Louis Cardinals team in the futures draft. Oh, really? We have Paul Goldschmidt to finish with the most RBIs at 25 to one. I think was the price. Um, so you know, taking some long shot. Uh, you know what? It, I you didn't sell me on either side, Moonoff. So give me both. Parlay it, <laughs> Chalk City. Cardinals run away with it. I I do like your Cubs angle. Uh, do we have any any Brewers handicap with with Aaron Rodgers leaving the state of Wisconsin? Does that matter? Will Will there be a change? No, I'm just kidding. Relax. I was just trying to crowbar in Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, the drama queen. <laughs> I'll, ta- I'll take St. Louis over and to win the division. Wow. Ooh-hoo. I mean, I think we got an air filter in here. All this chalk death, kicking around. Death taxes and the Cardinals uh, win fucking games. Yeah. Uh, so right. twenty seventeen, last full season, they would have gone under this number. Yeah, I, I hear you, I, and it's certainly easy to give out the Cardinals on the division. Odds, what do you mean? But I'm gonna go against the grain. Give me the Chicago Cubbies to win the division at plus six fifty, and obviously, I like their over at seventy seven and a half as well. Did you grow up a White Sox fan? I did. I, I it was just because we had WGN and I like Frank Thomas. Colby would be playing the gun sound effect right now. Switching teams like this on a rivalry? How oh, dare no. you? Come on. How dare you? Well, fr- uh, I I'll I'll tell you why I like the Cubs. Uh pitcher by the name of Justin Steele. I think he's going to have a nice uh, breakout year. Uh 3.18 ERA last year. Nice nice <laughs> lefty there and I I think he n- makes a nice jump up. Helps carry the team, and you know they they they, they brought in some good guys. Um, I don't know. I, I I'm I'm high on them. Again, they yeah. bought some. Uh, they found some buy low candidates: Cody Bellinger, Eric yeah. Hosmer, Tucker Barnhart. Oh, there you go. Locker room guys, right? I they like, just like have enough. Was saying again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I I think the over seventy seven and a half is too low. Cause I do think their pitching makes a jump up and they're frisky enough uh, to give out as a division winner as well. If, if something goes wrong with St. Louis and, and no one wants to listen to a show where we all give out the St. Louis Cardinals at minus 125 to win the division. Like, just, now, now we don't that's like winners. Bad podcast. Now we don't like winners. <laughs> now when it comes to baseball, we need if, crazy if, bets. If I listen to a show and a couple <laughs> experts and some other people all agreed on the same thing, I'd yes. immediately run to the window. It, uh, adding it to the parlay. I'm don't worry. I'll let you know how much it's going to pay out. Moving over to the NL West. Obviously Dodgers are a machine. The Padres figure out a way to uh, get their guys injured. Giants good every other year. Moon off. What do you, what's your take on the uh, NL West this year? Um, I'm going to go with the Arizona Diamondbacks over 74 and a half wins. Woo-hoo. Uh, now you're I doing th- a little basement shopping. I think that you take a look at this pitching rotation. Number one, Zach Gallen, Merrill Kelly. I mean, I think they're very underrated. If true baseball fans probably don't, or true baseball fan know who Zach Gallen, Merrill Kelly, Merrill, Merrill Kelly are. <laughs> of course, great one-two punch for this upcoming year. Uh, we'll tease Zach Gallen for a little bit later, but maybe you Cy Young look- Award, huh? Stay tuned. Yeah, yeah stay tuned. Uh, but you take a look at their uh, projected lineup, right? Corbin Carroll, you guys touched on at the top of the show. Uh, he's going to be a speedster. Look out for him in the stolen base market. Kelton Marte, uh, Jake McCarthy, Christian Walker, another guy. They also picked up Lourdes Gurriel Jr. That trade. Uh, so I think this team, again, I think it, there's, I, I kind of get feelings of this team of a couple seasons ago where the San Francisco Giants won 100 plus games and, and they made that division run and they just came out of nowhere. I'm gonna. You got. You say we're getting a little chalky. I'm gonna clear the dust up. Give me the Diamondbacks to win the NL West. Forty to one. Wow! Wow! Over the top. Love it. Love it. I mean, think about it. What division has? I mean, I I know the Dodgers don't typically choke in the regular season. No. uh, Yeah. This this, this feels like a Sean take, almost a baseball Sean take. Yeah. I I think it's stealing my thunder. I'll be honest. If Sean was saying this to you, Moonoff, you'd be making your your cringe your cringe face. (laughs) It's got the Zach Gallen. Uh, and again, if Zach Gallen wins the Cy Young, I, again, obviously it is a super competitive division, but you're getting it at 40 to one. I'll co-sign that over again, Sean, we're invested on uh Corbin, Mr. Speedster himself with the big bases, getting, getting the most steals in the league, Sean, All if right. we hit our two baseball bets, we're Look taking, out. we're taking this fucking thing down baseball touts. Uh, Mal, what do you got here for the uh, NL West? Well, 
Buckle up, boys, um, because Colorado I've got Rockies the to win the division. Backs to do absolutely everything. Um, really? I did a, a a too early preview show with Noah round about January, and I think as we were doing the show, I, I think I cashed a, a football bet or something live. <laughs> and, and the first thing I did with my winnings live on the show was whack it all on the Arizona Diamondbacks to win the division at forty to one. So that was my first ticket of the season. Um, yeah, I think. Um, I know, obviously, it's a little bit speculative, yes. The Dodgers, for some, for whatever reason this year, have just fallen in a little bit of a hole, um, given the Padres, the the box seat here. But I just love the... I think the Diamondbacks can certainly get over um, over 500. And the, the, the best bet here for the Diamondbacks is them to make the playoffs at plus 475. Um, they can still finish third in that division and make the playoffs. But yeah. honestly, that's an outstanding... That's life-changing, that is. Um <laughs> I don't plus, mind four, them to... plus 475 is life changing, or uh, it depends, the... well, it depends on what you're putting on, Sean. Doesn't it? <laughs> That's true, you're right. Roll um, that that chig of Conquo money over yeah. there. There you go. Um, yeah, like we say, it's it's like finding money in the street, and we uh, we all enjoy that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to upset Moon, but I'm all over the uh, the Diamondbacks. I do think the, the, the Padres will overcome the Dodgers. Um, but yeah, Diamondbacks to do whatever you want them to do. I think they can uh, get it all done. Corbin Carroll's they're going to be what I've got written down here is dynamic and aggressive. There you go. Ooh. I mean, come on. Sounds like the, your average person from Arizona. Dynamic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe the exact opposite, actually. <laughs> well, the aggressive part. I don't know about dynamic. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so I mean, again, you guys made a great case, oh. and you don't need to talk me into a forty to one to win the division. There's five teams. I'm with you guys. I'll ride the Diamondbacks at forty to one. I like that playoff bet. Don't, yeah, especially four seventy five. Don't tell my wife. No, she's a huge Dodgers fan. I'm gonna take the. Uh, it's really the only team she actually roots for. You gotta be <laughs> careful, dude. I'm gonna take the San Diego Padres yeah. under. Oh, as, really? Yes. And I even abbreviated them S A D, and sad. it makes sense because they're just sad. <laughs> they they are. They they get these guys. They end up getting injured. They're 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 right neck and neck with the Chargers, and all of the positive San Diego mojo is being wasted. Or being spent on the uh, the Aztecs in San Diego State getting to the Final Four, so I think I think or, the city of San Diego is out of magical runs. Give me the Sads under ninety three and a half. Or this is the beginning of the regression. I I'm a, I'm with Munaf. I think the Dodgers take a step back. Give me the Padres to win the division. But okay. I, like I said, the, the the Diamondbacks bet to make the playoffs is fun. Quickly well, on, on San Diego, can we have a quick head count on how many times everybody watched that Justin Decker video today? Because I watched it. <laughs> I kept about telling Kramer uh, that I kept rewatching. 50 plus it. times, no problem. Before breakfast, I'd watched it 50 <laughs> odd times. It was incredible. Because in the um, if you haven't seen uh, Decker's reaction video of San Diego State uh, <laughs> winning the Elite Eight and getting to the Final Four, he's he's jumping around, he's uh, happily throwing his hat, and then at the end he jumps and he like jumps into a dog bed. It, I don't I, know. Can it's, it's pure joy? I feel like if someone could splice that together with the music from the uh, the Tiger King singing "Good Morning." I, I would love. Oh, I, that's I would, a great wake up. I would love. I would love that. Be, it just. I mean, I agree. The the celebration at the end where he ain't. I, you say happily, but also feels a little angrily. Throws the hat, yeah. walks over to pick it up, and then does this weird triple jump celebration because it's not just that he no. does like a hop, skip, and a jump into the dog bed. I gotta rewatch it. <laughs> and then so it just good. ends. Then it just ends. I wanted to see more. I want a sequel. <laughs> Twitter.com uh, at Gim, uh, slash gambling podcast. Well, you gotta you gotta check it well, out. Well he'll and we do have him confirmed for the watch party. So we'll yes. make sure whatever goes down on uh, on Saturday. I'm we'll rewatching it now. He's wearing he's wearing a American flag <laughs> USA shorts. Uh, which, <laughs> oh man. Oh so good. Uh so you gotta tune into the Final Four watch party. Oh. Just in case San Diego State wins, the celebration will be awesome. With Justin Decker closing it out here, and then we will give out some Cy Young MVP, World Series picks, the NL East, aka the NL Beast. Moon off. Um, what do you got here? What's your uh, division play, and what's your win total bet? Yeah, I'm gonna stick with the same team here, Atlanta Braves. I think they are 
few and far between the best team Ooh. in the entire uh, MLB. Uh, you take a look at their just their projected lineup up and down from one to seven. I mean, it's going to be a, a nightmare for pitchers. Uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. is always in talks for MVP in the National League. Matt Olson is going to benefit from the, the shift being banned. Austin Riley had a great year. Michael Harris is the next big, you know, star coming up. Uh, and they also picked up Sean Murphy from the Oakland A's. I think that was a low key, great pickup uh, for the Atlanta Braves. And again, you take a look at their pitching rotation. I know they're going to be missing Kyle Wright for at least, I think the first two weeks, but you still have Max Fried, You still have Spencer Strider, uncle Charlie never aged at least during the regular season. And then you still have Mike Soroka. And like I mentioned, Kyle Wright, that should be coming back at some point of the year. They managed, they're managed very well. Um, they're a well-oiled machine. I'm going to stick with the Atlanta Braves. I like them to win the division and over their 95 and a half. This could be a hundred win team easily. Hmm. Uh, I'm seeing, uh, let's see, easy throwing that out in the chat. hundred plus wins at plus money is a, a good bet. Yeah. I mean, honestly, this feels like the kind of division with where you have some strength near the top and instead of trying to take chalk or, or figure out which team fade the Nats. Oh, Ryan, is your natitude at an all time low? Nat, uh, the Nats are 59 and a half. Fade them under. Under 59 and a half, huh? Under. What do you got for a uh, division then? Oh, I well, well, I'll get back to that later. I need to listen to what Malcolm has to say. Malcolm, what do you got? Okay, well, I'm going to agree with Moon. I think take the Braves. I think the prices are the wrong way around. Um, the books have the Mets as a slight favorite, um, but I prefer the Braves. So the Braves to win the division. And unfortunately, Ryan, I'm heading back to the base when it's mm. it's over for the Washington Nationals. It's over 59 and a half. Wow. Uh, the lineup's okay. It goes quite deep. Um, 66 wins, according to my jotter. So, um, <laughs> yeah, way over that over 59 and a half. This, Fuck. this overs on all the basement teams is going to uh, it's going to go six for six. Let me look. Let me look at my projections. Yeah, you know it's hard to project uh, the 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 ends of the data sets. Yeah, as you know, there's a lot of variance there, Sean. Well, you know what? I mean, no variance here. Phillies are a machine. Give me the over on the Philadelphia Phillies, eighty-seven what? and a half. Um, I'm not gonna. Uh, you know what? Actually, that's a high number. Here's what we'll do. That's uh, a real high number. Instead, yeah. yeah he's- and I'm gonna take. Uh, Maybe you take the under this year. Try something new. No, no. Okay. The Ryan. I had the Phillies <laughs> making the World Series. I had them winning the NL last year. Um, this is like playing chalk in DFS, Sean. Yeah, I don't even know when what you the win. Show- everyone wins, but if you I, fade I the chalk, I don't know if uh, I'll, I'll I'll let Moonoff chime in, but I feel like the majority of people are probably hammering the Mets. Phillies under, right? Um. Yeah, I think Injury so. News. I, I think. Yeah, maybe people do some regression after the run that they made to the World Series last year. They're going to be without Bryce Harper for at least, I think, till I think June or July at minimum. Uh, they just lost Reese Hoskins, a power bat in the lineup. Um, and I think that also the fact that the arms may be a little bit taxed after making their, you know, postseason run with Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler. But um, again, when you talk about the top two teams in this division with the Braves and the Mets, um, it feels like that 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 middling of the row is probably gonna have to suffer a little bit, whether it's mm. the Phillies or, or the or or the Marlins. But I think that yeah, Phillies are probably beginning that range of around 84, 83 to 84 wins. I got them win the division, got the over 87 and a half, and it's gonna be on the back of their rookie pitcher, Andrew Painter. Mm. Uh I know Daniel Vreeland likes him to win mm. ML rookie of the year at eleven to one. I think he comes in and helps uh, patch up. Uh, the issues uh, that they may have going there with the uh, pitch. Good to get a young, fresh arm in there. So yeah, give me I the. I think uh, Sean, he's, he's a little bit injured at the moment. Oh, it oh, okay. um, oh no, not not very, but just enough. He's going to be certainly. Uh, well, and that's the thing. Behind, I'm, so. I'm I'm going to pick the Phillies to win the division, uh-huh. but I would say this is a this is a bet you are going to look to wait on, like early July. That's when you're going to want to strike because I don't think they s- start off great. Um, but I do think they get there in the end. So I think this is a fun bet to bet uh, later on uh, in the year. If we could, uh, can we just, I'm going to change my pick that uh, if that's what you're, that's the emotion you bring after reading the Philly newsletter uh, under on the, on the Phillies. Wow, Ryan. Uh, I mean, absolutely no heart in your, in your talk. It sounds like they're going to start like shit. This number is going to plummet the live. T- I'm, I mean, on my projections, uh, AKA the fan graphs uh, table I'm looking at right here has 84, 
way off, way off. And uh, yeah, give me the Mets to win it all. Because what? How, when I can that... make you some money on the Phillies, Sean. Yeah, um, the Phillies, their exact finishing position, uh, third, Ooh. is a price of plus one seventy-five. No and way. There's a huge buffer on either side. They can be no a little way. bit better. They can be a little bit worse. The Marlins could be better. The Mets could be worse. There's a big gap. A lot of things can happen. And no one's touching the Phillies. They've got a 12-game sort of zone that they can slide up and down, and they're still going to finish third. So, yeah, plus 175 if you wanted to. I mean, it's probably not as exciting as you'd hope for, but uh, winner's a winner. Sean doesn't want to make money. No. Making a, no. a, a pussy <laughs> bet like that. I, I, see, your, I see your logic, but uh, go Phils. Give me them to win the division, <laughs> and uh, they're going to curse. He's got a reputation to uphold here. <laughs> All right, time to uh, move over to Cy Young Award, everyone's favorite. Gonna have to uh, recap, uh, you know, keep my hot streak alive when it comes to giving out Cy Young winners. Uh, Mao, I'll let you get started here. Who do you like, AL NL Cy Young? Um, I've picked two in each category: one um, from the fancy end of the market, and one from the business end. I'm gonna <laughs> with some of the American League. I've got Shohei Otani. <laughs> Because why not? He's absolutely superhuman. Um, he just gets better and better and better, and is incredibly fun to root for. Plus, I'm high on the Angels, as discussed. So uh, that puts Otani in the frame at twelve to one. And then I mentioned um, Chris Sale early in the show from Boston Red Sox. Has had a lot of injury problems, but there's no doubt he's got the ability. And one little bounce back season um, in the twilight of his career, Chris Sale is one hundred to one. Uh, wow. to win the American League Cy Young. So they're my two picks. And then in the National League, again, I've kind of got a young guy, old guy here. Spencer Strider from the Atlanta Braves um, is an absolutely incredible pitcher. I think all he needs is a few more innings. If he can get through a little bit more work this year, um, the 11 to 1, he was outstanding last season. He's looked really good in spring, which I know kind of isn't a great barometer, but. I think he's got a big chance. And then last year, Jacob de Grom was round about three to one to win this award. Um, yeah, he gets injured, but he's gone to Texas. He's fit. He's firing 100 miles an hour in spring training. He's now 40 to one to win this this season. Um, he's the same player that was three to one when we had this conversation last year. And he's now going off at 40 to one. And I still think he's the best pitcher in baseball. So yeah, 40 to one about Jacob de Grum. I think this could be one of those conversations we're having in November, thinking, why didn't we notice that? Well, luckily I, I've noticed it. So there you go, there, my fault. <laughs> I like that. Why did we notice that? Well, luckily Malcolm noticed it. Um <laughs> fun Cy Young fact. Yeah. Last year Justin Verlander won the Cy Young pitching 220, or I'm sorry. Why do I not see the how, how many innings did he fucking pitch last year? Uh, I think it was oh, above a hundred. You're right. I just, Let me double check your I, 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 I mean, sorry, above two hundred. Yeah, I closed. Uh, anyway, Alcantara pitched millions. He was two twenty three. Two twenty three. Oh, I was right. Two twenty three. All right. So yeah. Uh, sorry, one seventy five last year. I'm sorry. Cy Young. How many innings do you think Cy Young pitched in in the year that he pitched the most innings in a season? Since the awards two eighty two. Two eighty two. What do you think, Munaf? Uh, I'm gonna say like three hundred. <laughs> 453 Fuck innings. Yeah. He had wow. he had four he had five seasons where he pitched over 400 innings. He then had another dozen that he pitched over 320. Um maybe we <laughs> should rename this to something that makes a little bit more sense. Cuz Cy Young was a man. He pitched uh, he pitched every day. These these new new school guys <laughs> player empowerment power, barely barely willing to go 7 innings. Anyway, sorry, just shitting on baseball. Moon off. <laughs> what do you got here? Uh, what do you got here for your AL NL Cy Young? Yeah, I'll give you two from each uh, league as well. Uh, National League, like we mentioned earlier, Zach Gallen. Um, I think that's some pretty good value there. Anything above ten to one that you find. Um, he's gotten better every single year that he's been in the majors and been a starting pitcher. Last year, twelve and four with a two point five four ERA. He's been below uh, a sub uh, ERA of three. Um, in what three out of four for years that he's been in the major leagues. I know 2021 was a bad year for him, but other than that, he's been really solid. Uh, and I do like him for Cy Young for this upcoming year. Other one I'm going to go with at around 20 to one Dodgers pitcher, Julio Urias. Um, Walker Bueller is not, he's probably going to miss the entire year uh, for the Dodgers from Tommy John surgery. I feel like Clayton Kershaw, another year older, maybe takes another step back. 
I mean, you take a look at his numbers la- over the last two years for Julio Urias. Uh, 2021, he went 20 and three with a 2.96 ERA. Last season, 17 and seven with a 2.16 ERA. If he can bump up the innings a little bit more, um, I think that he, again, he can win the Cy Young. Last year, he finished third in the voting for Cy Young. So now he's going to be the frontline pitcher for this Dodgers team. You're in a market where obviously in LA, you'll, you'll have the eyes on you, especially with the name on the front with the Dodgers. I like Julio Reyes at 20 to one agree with Malcolm about Otani as well. Anytime you give me any odds for Otani above 10 to one, even as a pitcher, I'm going to take that for Cy Young and the other pitcher. Uh, I'm going to go with the hometown guy here with the Astros. Um, Framber Valdez, 15 to one with Verlander. Now at the door, he's going to be that frontline pitcher, left-handed pitcher for the Astros uh, had an incredible run last year in the postseason. I think that he's going to be, have a, he's, I think he's due for a uh, contract as well. So I think that again, this is a guy that can be the number one guy and is going to be the number one guy at 15 to one for a team that's supposed to be one of the best in the entire MLB. Uh, I'm going to go with him at 15 to one Frember Valdez. Why is Otani so high? Uh, I think because his MVP odds and a people or maybe, you know, I don't know what to vote for. Yeah. Like, like if he's going to go out and hit 40 home runs, or 45 home runs. They're not going to waste the Cy Young on him. Basically. Yeah, and that's why. But again, if he goes out and pitches, let's say, say he goes like 18 and five with a sub 2.5 ERA and pitch 200 innings and strikes out 220 batters, it's really hard to ignore that to give him Cy Youngs. And again, if you get a healthy season from Mike Trout, they're just going to take MVP uh, votes away from each other. Then you look at Shohei Otani if he has a great year pitching at 12 to one, or give him the Cy Young for his for a yeah. season that he could have. I like Otani. You can put him on the sheet for me as well. I also have. Uh, it, it sounds like this uh, this Gallon kid is a popular pick. He was written down in the notes that I stole from someone else. And then, uh, <laughs> great analysis. No, I, that, well, I mean, it's better than me giving you. Giving you, like you fo- I mean, again, I'm listening to these guys. Yes, and I'm, I, and I'm. I'm with. And I'm going to steal some of their picks as well. Yeah, that's that's why I'm just being transparent. I appreciate that. It's a it's so a many so many day thing. handicappers out there are not transparent. Oh, I mean, sorry, let me do it. I really like uh, <laughs> Shohei Otani because he has a. No, I'm just that. That was me doing a, a a voice of someone reading from a teleprompter. I like it. So you're you're going Otani and Gallon for your two players. Oh, I didn't realize we were giving out two. No, they, they uh, you know the MLB guys. You can't you can't stop them. They want to give out more and more. Okay. Are you giving out more and more? No, or? I'm going to give out three plays. <laughs> okay. One is uh, Otani again, twelve to one. Uh, guys made a great case for it. Uh, for my NL play, I got two. One at twenty to one. The Urias angle that Munoff uh, has there at twenty to one. I love it because I'm with you. I mean, I was thinking uh, Gonsolin, but with the injury, I, I don't like that. C- Clayton Kershaw at fifty to one. Maybe he has a like veteran comeback season, but I think your eyes at 20 to one is kind of the sweet spot. And then 200 to one, mm. Justin Steele of the Chicago Cubs, because he's a listener to the show. He listens to the show. Oh, so, wow. I mean, we have a, we have a chance to bet on a guy who listens to the show at 200 to one. I love it. Uh, give me, give me uh, Justin Steele, 200 to one. And uh, also why I'm on the Cubs. Moving over to the MVP. We got an AL NL MVP. Mal, we'll let you start off. What do you got? Um, two in the American League. Mike Trout um, obviously needs no expanding upon, but I do think he's going to have a really good year. He looks, there was the, the scare with his back last year, um, but apparently that's all fixed and he just looks absolutely ready to go. I think, again, um, he can have a stellar season. And I wrote down Bo Bichette at 50 to 1. Some of these markets, you you kind of start with the name of a player that you want and then try and find something that he's going to do. Because I think Bo Bichette's going to have a fantastic season. So I was trying to find some markets to slot him into. And at 50 to 1, um, he, had, he finished last season. The way he finished last season was MVP. Um, if he can extrapolate that, if he can just crack straight on again, which I think he can, a little bit more maturity, 50 to 1 is a great price. And in the National League, I've just got the one. Uh, I'm very confident in Ronald Acuna Jr. Um, we've said that we like Atlanta a lot in that division. I think he's going to have a 30-30 season. He's going to steal more bags um, with the opportunities already 
um, afforded to him that we've discussed. Um, so yeah, 30 30 for Akuna and, uh, and an MVP for him. Munaf, how say you? MVP. Yeah, American League. Um, Jose Ramirez, 15 to 1. Oh, um, yeah. He's, I mean, the model of consistency. He's a guy that can get you 30, 35 home runs. He drives in the RBI. So batting average is always there for him as well. Bats from both sides of the plate. Um, and again, by far the best hitter in that lineup for the uh, Cleveland Indians slash Guardians. Um, so at 15 to 1, I like him. A little further down the line, uh, Kyle Tucker, 25 to 1 for the Astros. Uh, with Jose Altuve missing, I think that production is going to go to somebody else. He's a left handed batter as well. Again, like we mentioned, that with the defensive shift being banned. His average should go up. He's had 30 home runs exactly in back-to-back -back seasons, 92 RBIs in 2021, 107 last year. Did have 25 stolen bases last year, so he could be another 30-30 guy uh, for the Astros. Uh, so I'm going to go with Kyle Tucker. National League, um, I mean, it's just so cluttered at, at the top. I'll make Sean happy. Give me Trey Turner plus yeah. 850 for the Phillies. Uh, he's just been, I've been a fan of him ever since he was with the nationals. He came up with them. Uh, the guy can hit for average. He can still steal bases. He can, you know, score the runs. Um, won't be surprised if he's in the realm of 40 to 50 um, uh, stolen bases for this upcoming year. Obviously it is a big, sexy uh, stat about home runs where he's not really a power guy, but if he gets to 25 home runs, uh, and he's definitely going to bat above 300. Trey Turner plus 850 for me. Kramer, Paul Goldschmidt, you. National League, okay, lock that in. And I also had uh, Bo Bichette. I mean, Sean, you you're an old school guy. You loved his dad, Dante. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I know. I know we're watching a little Star Wars with the uh, the Bo Bichette references. Oh yeah, Boba Fett, uh, loving that as well. Um, <laughs> That's Sorry, a, that's a Sometimes great photo Yeah, we got to get the uh, photo to team. win the MVP. Boba Boba Shet, uh, <laughs> on the. Uh, it sounds so much like Boba Fett. <laughs> I mean, honestly, when when uh, when uh, Malcolm first said that, I thought I honestly thought I heard Boba Fett. Um, so no you're on. <laughs> you didn't question it. You're just like, no. Ah, I'm like, makes uh, sense. it must be guy. You know, new guy coming up. I, I must have missed it. So you got Boba Shet and Goldschmidt. Yeah. Goldschmidt right. was the thing that uh, the liquid. That's what we call it in America. <laughs> what, that was that Malcolm was spitting out. <laughs> <laughs> he was Goldschmitting. All right, for me, uh, Trey Turner always got to oh, get a little God. taste of the homer, uh, the the homer play at a fifty to one. But I'll also say, love this long shot, and again, why I'm slightly higher than the market on the Cubs. Uh, give me Seiya Suzuki, mm. seventy to one. He was a rookie last year, coming from Japan. Uh, he's been hitting some home runs. The swing looks really smooth. Seventy to one. Uh, uh, USA. Moon off. You Suzuki. It, it's seventy to one. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, yeah, seventy on, to one. Sean. I can't argue against it. <laughs> Benedict um, Benedict Green over here. No, I Which just, side I, are you on? I wanted I wanted his take on Suzuki. The wound is still fresh. <laughs> yeah, I think again when you, we talk about these Japanese players that are really starting to come over to to the United States and and then play in the MLB, I feel like they're they're a step ahead of some of the batters that have been in uh, the U.S. I, it, it, I think one guy you probably want to look out for for rookie of the year. I know we're not talking about it for the Red Sox is Yoshida. He had an incredible World Series or uh, World Baseball Classic, uh, and he's one of the best batters that he was when he was in Japan. Now for the Red Sox, so I know he's. I think he's now the odds on favorite for Rookie of the Year. I don't know if you want to put a little bit on that, but uh, you'll see. With now with you know we talk about Otani, Suzuki, guys like that coming from international waters. I mean these guys do make splashes. So at seventy to one, I mean you can't argue against it. Put a little bit on it. Yeah, and he is a little banged up, but by all accounts, he's he should be good to go here. So. Keep an eye on him, and uh, I'm gonna copy Moonoff's uh, play there. At Tucker, twenty-five to one, good price, good angle, and uh, not much to add there. So moving over to the final mm. World Series predictions, Mal, who wins the 2023 World Series? Who do you have beating who for the World Series? I have a World Series between the Tampa Bay Rays and the St. Louis Cardinals. Ooh. I think they're both a similar price. Um, to I'm just frantically looking through my notes here. They're both a similar price to make the 22 to one. Yeah, they're both 22 to one shots. Um, and if you're going to force me to pick one, oh, wow. I'm going to stick with the Rays. Um, wow. Okay. I, 
That they come out with a strong division. Um, yeah, and I just think they're gonna edge it too. Yeah, give me the Rays over the Cardinals. So Rays are nineteen to one. Um, and you got the Tampa Bay Rays, nineteen to one to win it all. Moonoff, how say you? World Series. I'm gonna go with the Atlanta Braves uh, out of the National League. Uh, again, for all the reasons that we already talked about, don't want to regurgitate all that. Out of the American League, I do think that the Astros at least make it to the championship series again in the American League. <sighs> mm, he's torn. G- give me the, give me the Blue Jays. Wow. I think this oh. is a, yeah, I think this so is the year they put it all together. And sorry, I was I was googling Boba Fett images, but who did you have Toronto beating? Atlanta. Uh, no, I Atlanta. Atlanta Braves beating the Blue oh. Jays. Oh, it, you, so you have Toronto versus Atlanta, and that, yeah, okay. You can uh, currently get that at fifty to one if you wanted to block bet on the exact result. Um, I'm furiously trying to give you the price for the. You had the Rays beating the Cardinals, correct? Yeah. Malcolm, that's a hundred and thirty to one. Okay, now we're talking. And That's Atlanta, changing short. Yeah, yeah, there, there you go. go. Atlanta plus seven fifty <laughs> uh, to win the World Series. Ryan, real money, Kramer, twenty twenty three World Series. What do we got? I, I I like how you're having me go first. Well, obviously, yeah. So I can steal. Obviously, you. I told you already. I'm gonna I'm gonna disregard the fact that I'm wearing a Yankee shirt. All rise, Aaron Judge. We're gonna have the Guardians. Of uh, the Galaxy, okay. they're no longer Cleveland. They're the, the Galaxy <laughs> Guardians. Which, by the way, how how are the how is Atlanta not also the Guardians? Then I'm very confused. Uh, and who do they face? Moonoff's in my ear about the Braves, but I'm going to take the St. Louis Cardinals. Okay, Guardians over the Cardinals. Guardians over the Cardinals. So you have the Cleveland Guardians. Yes. Winning their first ever World Series as the Guardians. Yes. And we can all watch Major League to commemorate it. 22 to 1. Yeah, it's not a bad. Pr- I mean, I, I you, you know, if you shop around, you can probably find a little better than that. Um, yeah, I almost, let me see if I can find a price on that. It might be too deep. I might have gone too deep. For me, it's pretty easy. Give me the Chicago Cubs uh, squaring off against my Philadelphia Phillies and the Phillies get redemption. Bring home the World Sir, Series. Wait, you're having two national league, teams? national league teams. <laughs> oh, come on! I, oh, come you're on. rooting. You're rooting my bit. Man. Come on! That, right. I, I love. All right, I appreciate you trying to pivot to calling it a bit. That was good. Thank that was for participating uh, in the sports gambling podcast. Yeah, there you go. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. <laughs> um, no. Guardians to beat the Cardinals. Exact result: one hundred and fifty to one. Sean, I couldn't find Beautiful. the price on the. On the, I can't find the uh, bra- the the Phillies to beat the Why? Cubs World Series price for some reason. All right, so obviously the Phillies <laughs> the Phillies beat the Cubs. Please clip in this. The, in, no need to clip Sean's this. World Series pick. <laughs> I got hey, the, maybe he has something in the almanac behind you. I don't know. Yes, come on. <laughs> the YouTube.com slash sports the, gambling podcast. He misread the I, almanac. I had my thumb on the out on the. Uh, on the almanac, <sighs> give me the Phillies versus the Minnesota Twins. Oh. Phillies beat the Twins, shock the world. Uh, uh, Eighteen to one. Phillies to take down the Twins would be two hundred and fifty to one. So just getting even deep, oh higher up the ladder. Uh, look out, long shots. Hey, this was a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, if you haven't already, what are you doing? Subscribe to the MLB Gambling Podcast. Hear uh, Malcolm on the Premier League Gambling Podcast as well, uh, and of course, also check out uh, Moonoff on the NBA Gambling Podcast, the Propcast, NBA Gambling Podcast. Now seven days a week, MLB Gambling Podcast. You guys are going uh, right. going to be grinding seven days a week as well, right? Um, five. <laughs> we'll have to five have to seven. a conversation about that. All right. Well, we'll <laughs> see. We'll- five and seven days a week. There you go. Yeah, but between he, five and seven. Maybe eight, good, maybe nine. Malcolm. We'll see. That's why I keep Malcolm around. <laughs> Thank you. Let's do fourteen days a week. I like that. Yeah. Uh, early and late games. Yeah, and, and by the way, who said we hate the NBA? Seven days a week is yeah, that even come necessary? On. Let's go. Don't they not play a couple of days for load ma- management? <laughs> uh, make sure you follow Malcolm on Twitter at mal underscore b underscore sport. Follow at MLB SGPN and of course follow Moonoff at Sports Nerd Eight Two Four. And guess what, Sean? What we are less than a couple a couple months away from talking about arse cream. 
Oh, there you go. Look out, Art Scream. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm sure we'll have Mal back talk a little uh, horse racing. Squirt as y'all well. scream. <laughs> Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Uh, baseball is back. Kramer, let it ride. <laughs>